hello friends welcome once again to our youtube channel i'm so glad to have you back here in today's tutorial we're going to be learning how to make this non-stretch or satin lined pleated to band cap which has a round pleated frame design attached to it one of our subscribers requested for this video and here we are with it please if you are new to this channel and you are yet to subscribe to our channel Kindly do so by clicking on the subscription button and also on the notifications bell to enable you get notified whenever new tutorials are uploaded. And I'm saying a very big thank you to all our old subscribers. Thank you so much. Meanwhile, if there are still other designs which you would like us to upload on our YouTube channel, you can as well let us know by leaving a comment in the comment section. Now, the matter materials needed for this tutorial include your satin fabric you'll be needing about one and a half yard using a wording to pad the design the pleated frame is a padded design we also be needing a scissors matching color of thread and needle measuring tape as well as other accessories to embellish your work but this is optional The design we are working on for this tutorial has the tuban cap. Now the tuban cap is a pleated, is a round pleated band tuban cap. That is to say it has the pleated band which is round and not v-shaped. It has the tuban base which is lined and attached to the tuban cap is also the handle for tying since we are working with a non-stretchy fabric now coming over to the design the design is there is the round pleated frame on it all of which were made using the satin fabric and then the pleated frame was also padded in order to give it a bit of weight and we use and i used wording to do the padding now for this tutorial we are working on this on a two band base using a non-stretchy fabric and it's going to be having a pleated band and then i have my fabric cut out already before now so i'll be stating out the measurement for each piece of fabric now the design is divided into the band which is the pleated band the base and also the handle at the back for tying now i have my first piece of fabric which is the fabric for my band this is it now the width from this end to this end is 12 inches why the length the full length is 28 inches so for the first piece of fabric which is for the band the measurement is 12 inches by 28 inches now this is it for that then coming over to the fabric for the base we need two different pieces of fabric because the the cap is going to be lined due to the light nature of the certain fabric we are using in order to give it some weight and then I have two pieces of fabric here. Now the measurement for each piece of fabric is 15 inches for the width. From this end to this end, the width is 15 inches. Why the length from this end down to this other end, the full length is 28 inches also. And then you cut out two different pieces for it, 28 by 15 inches. So this is going to be for the base and it's going to be lined. And then the last but not the least is the handle. Okay, the handle that is going to be attached to the back of the design. And we'll also be needing two different pieces of fabric. Now, the measurement for each piece of fabric is 5 inches for the width. The width is 5 inches, while the length is 12 inches. So, 5 inches by 12 inches. And then you cut this out twice, two different pieces of fabric. So, in total, we have about five different pieces of fabric for the base. Now, coming down to the tutorial properly, we are going to be starting with the band, which is going to be pleated. And now to do that, I have my fabric right here before me. So I will start by folding in one inch, probably by one inch. I will fold it down to the end. And after folding it in this way, I'm going to place on my sewing machine and I'm going to sew it down from one end to the other. Now as soon as that is done, I will 
pick up my fabric again and make another print okay this time around it's going to be resting on the first print this way and then i will sew from one end to the other and then i'll continue again after the second print i'll make another print until i exhaust the entire width of the fabric that is i get to the end of the end end of the width of the fabric and then after pleating i'll sew down with my needle sorry with my sewing machine and that's i'll keep making more pleats till i've pleated this entire fabric now i want to emphasize that while making your pleats the thread should not be visible the only place where the thread is allowed to show it's on the last pleat that is all so as we pleat each fabric okay as i pleat this make this first pleat and sew the second pleat that i'm going to be making on the first pleat should cover the thread from the first pleat okay this second pleat should help me hide the thread in that order as i pleat the new pleat should cover the thread from the previous layer so it is only at the last pleat at the end of my fabric that is where my um, my sewing thread is allowed to show anyway as soon as we as soon as we are done with it you get what i'm saying better so i'm going back now to pleat and sew my fabric and then i'll get back at this point i'm done sewing and then this is my work this is how it comes out to be now if you observe if you look carefully you will see that the sewn thread is showing only on the last split okay that's how it's supposed to be and then the previous splits have hidden the thread from the previous split so each new split hides the thread from the previous split so this is it and then the last split has the thread only so this is how it looks like so after pleating my fabric this is what i get now to continue we'll be adding the base to our work so i'm going to get the first base okay i'm going to be placing it fine side i'm going to be placing the fine side facing me and the wrong side facing my working table then i'm going to get my band that i just finished working on and i'm going to be placing it on it this way again now the fine side of the band is facing the fine side of my fabric of that is the fabric for the base and then lastly i will get the second band and then I'll place the fine side to face the fine side of the fabric on the working tape. That is for the band, the base, fine side facing fine side. So I'll place it down this way. So this is what I get. Now I'm going to get this on my sewing machine. And I'm going to be stitching this edge down. And I'm going to come down and stitch every other edge. Okay, but along one side of my fabric, I'm going to leave a little bit of allowance for turning my fabric inside out. Now, mark you why you position your fabric to sew. You have to sew alongside this last line so that this sewing thread here is not visible. And so, I'll position my fabric in a way that I'm going to also sew on the last stitch. Okay, the last stitch for the band. The same thing is applicable to this second fabric so i will get pins to help me hold down this edge while i sew all the way to the end so then i'm going to get this okay at this point at this point i'm done making my stitches around my fabric as you can see so this is this end also this other end also this is the part where i have the band and then this is the base and then at one end, I left a few inches allowance for turning my fabric inside out. So I will turn my fabric and get back. This is my work and I'm done turning it inside out. This is the part that has the fine side of the band. And this is the wrong side. This part has the wrong side of the band. So you can see that our fabric has been lined, okay? And then this is it. So what I'm going to be doing now is that I'm going to be joining everything together to form my cap. Okay, please, at this point, if you have access to electricity, it's very important that you iron your fabric to straighten it out. And then after doing that, I'll fold my fabric into it to the sew. And I'm going to sew. Okay, I'm going to make a straight sewing stitch starting from the band, which has a pleated base. I'll stitch this down 
and then stitch all the way to this end. And then after that, we'll come back to join, to attach the handle to the base. So that is that. Okay, at this point, I'm done stitching. And then when I turn my fabric inside out, this is what I get. Okay, so this is the fine side. This Again, is the back. In addition to all we have done for the cap, we're also going to be adding a hand to look at the back for time. So I have to make it adjustable and to fit different head sizes. Like I said earlier, I have two pieces of fabric for that. And each piece of fabric measured 5 inches for the width and 12 inches for the length. So I'm going to be folding each piece of fabric into two this way. And I'm going to be sewing from one end to the other end. But then before then, I'm going to trim the edge a bit. So I'm going to um, repeat the same thing for the second piece of fabric. Okay. And then after that, I will sew. And after sewing, we'll get back to continue. Uh, this is my work and I'm done sewing. All that is there for me to turn it inside out and attach it to the base. So after turning it inside out, this is it. This is how it will be. This is the back view. Now I'm going to get my measuring tape. We're going to be attaching our handle to our design, okay? And then from the right side, I'm going to measure out two inches, okay? And then from the left side too, I'll measure out another two inches. Then from this band, okay, from this middle part here towards the left side, I'll measure another two inches and I'm going to mark it. So from this middle part to the right, two inches, and from this middle part to the left, two inches. So from this marked line here down to this marked line here, what we have is four inches. Now I will get the first piece of fabric for my band and then ensure that the sewn edge of your band is going to be facing the base. And then I'm going to fold in the fabric inside. You know this um the edge of this fabric is strange, so I'll fold it inside. And I'm going to be placing it this way at the mark edge. I'll pin it down. So when I get to my sewing machine, I'm going to be sewing this part down. I'll stitch this part down. And then I'll get the second fabric and repeat the same thing. So this is my second fabric. The edges have also been folded inside. And then I'm going to place it this way. So the way it is placed. And then I'm also going to hold it down with my pin. So this is it. So this is going to serve as the handle for tying after tacking. So I'm going to place on my sewing machine and sew this now. Then place this other end and sew it down. So this is my work. And then I've stitched down this end. I've also stitched down this end. So when you open it up, it's like this. Now I'm going to fold my turn my fabric inside out to the wrong side. Now I'm going to get my needle and thread and I'm going to be running, making a running stitch in order to form my cap. My running stitch will start immediately after the pleat down all the way to this end. So I have my needle and thread here and I'll be stitching it down. Pass your needle in and out until you get to the end of the fabric. Then secure your thread and cut off the excess just like we do for a normal to band cap so as soon as that is done this is what i have and then uh to band cap is ready so i'm going to place this on my dummy head and then i'll show us the finished outlook of our design so as soon as it's all done this is the front view you can see the pleated frame and the base this is the side view this is the back view can see where the handle where we have the handle okay and so this is all that there is to okay. it so right here now i have my tuban cap already sewn and as you can see the handle for tying the fabric is lined this is the round band pleated tuban cap 
with the base lined and handle for time that is it for the to band cap now coming over to the pleated frame which i also said was padded i have my fabric cut out already and then this is my fabric now the measurement for this fabric which we are going to be using to make the round pleated frame is the measurement is 26 inches by 40 inches that is to say that the width is that is sorry that is to say that the length which is the head circumference is 26 inches the length the head circumference is going around the head that is 26 inches why the width is 40 inches so this is it this part here is the width which is going around the head so from here to here is 26 inches from here to here the part which goes around the head which is the length and head circumference is 26 inches why the width which is the depth is 40 inches and then coming over i have my wording here or my padded which will be using to line the satin fabric in order to give it a bit of weight to make the pleated frame full the measurement for this is 26 inches by 20 inches now the head circumference is 26 inches while the width is 20 inches which is which is half of the satin fabric that is for the pleated frame now in addition to the fabric for the pleated frame there is this option of adding a handle at the back of the pleated frame for tying at the back if you want to do that you'll be needing two pieces of fabric the measurement should be six inches by 12 inches so you get both pieces of fabric you fold each piece of fabric into two with the wrong side in with the wrong side facing you and the fine side inside and so from one end to the other then you go ahead to turn your fabric inside out that gives you the handle for tying at the back should in case you want to add a handle to the back of the pleated frame but i'm not going to be doing that i'm just going to be making my pleated um, frame on my tuban cap without the handle not to worry as we continue you will get this better my pleated frame remember i earlier said that the measurement is 26 inches for the length which is the head circumference and 40 inches for the width so this is it and i also have the word in which i said is 26 inches for the length while the width is 20 inches so i have my certain fabric here and my wording what is expected of me to do is that i'm going to place the wording on the fabric and then iron it out now the wording has two parts to it there's this part of the wording that has gum that is the part that shines when you hold it and then this other part does not have gum it's just wool like and hairy in texture so that is the wrong side of the wording so you will get your your satin fabric the wrong side of the satin fabric and then place your wording the fine side of the wording that is the part of the wording that has gum you place it on the wrong side of your fabric this way and then you get your electric iron which must have been plugged to a source of power supply a socket okay there should be electricity so that it can get hot and then you iron this out by ironing the wording and by ironing the wording on the fabric there's this transfer of heat which allows the wording and the fabric to glue together as one because that part of the fabric that shines on the wording has gum on it so as soon as we are done with that we find out that one part of the fabric has the wording okay so what you do next after doing that is that you fold the fabric into two equal halves because one part would have had the wording the other part does not you fold it into two equal halves like i'm doing and then you place on your sewing machine and so you are going to be sewing all three edges that are open you will have three edges open you'll be sewing all three edges closed but along one edge you are going to leave a little bit of allowance 
where you'll be turning your fabric inside out from. Now, should in case you iron your fabric with your wadding and it does not stick down or glue down properly, there should be no cause for alarm. You'll be able to sew it, and by sewing, when sewing the three sides, you'll be able to hold it down in place. So, even though you cannot or probably due to lack of power supply you'll be, un you'll be unable to iron the fabric you can just go ahead to sew down so what you do is that you fold your fabric into two with the fine side inside while the wrong side is outside and then you place your wording on it and then just go ahead to sew all three sides and remember to leave the allowance at one edge so that after sewing you can turn your fabric inside out so I'm going to do that for my fabric and as soon as I'm done, I'll get back for us to continue. Okay, right before me is my fabric and have sewn it all. I've sewn all three edges. I've added my wadding to my fabric and I have the other side of my fabric here. Why at this end, I have a little bit of allowance for turning my fabric inside out. So I'm going to go ahead to do that and then I'll get back. So this is my fabric now and I'm done turning it inside out. This is how it looks like. I have the sewn part here and then I had to go back to stitch down the part that was open where I turned the fabric inside out from. So if you have your electric iron, if there is electricity, you can go ahead to iron your fabric. And then moving on to the next step, which involves splitting the fabric so that we can be able to form the round pleated frame. So to form the pleated frame, I'm going to be starting from the middle and I'm just going to start making my pleats. You can make it as how wide you want to be. You want it to be, you can go ahead to measure it, one inch difference, 1.5 inch difference, two inches, depending on your choice or preference. So I'm just going ahead to make my pleats this way, gradually, gradually. as much as possible to endeavor that they are all equal okay So as soon as that is done, I'm going to be holding the middle down with my clip while I go on both sides to extend the clips that I've already made. So starting from this side, I'll just start arranging my fabric and then I'll straighten the pleats all the way to the end. So this is what I'll keep doing. And as soon as I'm done with this left part, I'll hold it down with my clip and then I'll go over to the right part and repeat the same thing also. So I'm going to adjust this and then set it in place properly and get back. So this is my work and I'm done holding down this side and holding down this side. Now the because of the thickness or because of the weight of the fabric, my pegs is not able to hold it down properly. So what I'll just do is I'm going to proceed with stacking immediately so that I'll be able to hold the fabric in place before completing the arrangement. So for my tacking, I'm starting from the middle. Please ensure that your thread is properly doubled. So I'm taking off, I've taken off my clip and I'll start passing my glue and thread from the clip one after the other and I surpass my needle through it. I'll keep arranging it and adjusting it to get it in place, okay? So 
so this is it now i'm going to go back and then tack it down at that point several times in order to help me fully secure it down in place before i move over to the edges At this point, I'm done tacking the middle part in place, so I'll get my needle and thread again and then continue with the side. Okay, and before I tack, I'll make sure that I adjust the fabric properly in place. Okay. So before I tack down at the end, I'm going to be tacking down close to the end first. So this is it. I'm done tacking the middle part. I've tacked down this part and I'm going to arrange my fabric at the end and tack down the end to hold it in place. Thereafter, I'm going to go over to the right side and repeat the same thing for the right side also. So this is my fabric and I'm done pleating and I've tacked down from one end to the other and I have it this way. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be placing this on our dummy head to tack it down together so as to join the pitted frame down to the dummy head so i have my band cap here already soon so to be able to get the right fitting or the right position for this i have to place this on my dummy head first and foremost i have my band cap on my dummy head and then this is it so what i'll be doing next is that i'll be placing my pleated frame on it and i have my pleated frame this way now the pleated frame goes around the head so i'll adjust it and set it in place and as soon as i've gotten the right fitting i'll get my pins then help me hold it down in place and thereafter i'll take it off the dummy head then proceed to tack it down on my working surface so as to join both together now in order to make it easier for me i first got the middle of my cap and I use my chalk to hold it down in place to mark it down then I got the middle of my pleated frame and I also marked it down using my chalk so that the middle part of both piece of fabric can align together so when it comes to tacking I have my needle and thread here already so I'll be passing my thread from inside the cap all the way down to the pleat remember the middle part of both the pleat and the fabric should align. So I'm going to pass it till I get to the uppermost part of the pleated frame. And this is it. And then I'm going to take my needle and thread back inside it, inside the pleated frame, down to the tuban cap. And I'll tack it at this point a couple of times so that it becomes firm. Okay, it becomes firm and secure. And so my needle and thread is out from the cap and then I will go again a couple of times. So this is it now. I've been able to pass it inside the pleated frame. Okay. And to continue, I'm going to start from the middle part down to the left side. 
and as soon as I've secured that part, I'll come back again, tack from the middle part down to the right part. So this is it to continue my thread I need is coming out from the pleated frame and about two or three steps, then out from inside make my big stitch. So I'm going to pass my needle and thread from inside the pleated frame down to the next spot where I want to come out from. And I have it this one. I'm going to tack it at that point twice to secure it there. Then, as soon as it's out, I'm going to pass my needle and thread from the cap all the way to the uppermost part of the cap so I can secure everything down together. So, this is me now passing my needle and thread to the uppermost part of the cap of the pleated frame and as you pass your needle and thread endeavor to arrange your pleats in order so that it can all come out uniform passing it down to the next part where I want to continue from. So I'm done with that and I'm going to take it up up again into the pleated frame and then as soon as it's out from the pleated frame I'm going to pass my needle and thread to make to make a very wide um, stitch inside okay so my needle and thread is out from here that's the pleated frame i'll tack it down i'll take it down to the very next spot and tack it at that point and then i'm going to tack it down twice there and then pass my needle and thread all the way down to the top of the pleated frame and take it back to the tuban cap in that order, just like I just finished tacking for the other parts. So the thread I need is out from the top of the pleated frame. And I'm about going back in again. And so that is how I'll click that in. I'll complete this left side and then go over to the right side to complete it. So at this point, I'm done tacking my pleated frame down to my to band cap. This is it. And then this is also the back view. So all I have to do is to arrange this part down properly and still use my needle and try to tack it down in place because I don't want to attach handle to it. So I'll place this on the dummy head to show us the outlook. So while it is placed on my dummy head, this is how it's going to be looking like. This is the side view. And then this is this other side and by the time i flip it over to the back i will be having it this way so this is it and with this we have come to the end of today's tutorial thank you so much for clicking in and for watching please kindly subscribe to our youtube channel if you are yet to do so and don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section, give this video a thumbs up, and endeavor to share to as many that will benefit from this tutorial. You can also decide to follow us on our various social media platforms, on Facebook and on Instagram as Jenny Concept. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.